is beautiful guys how are you today that is my worship and I really really hope that I'm allowed to keep it because it's really gonna set the mode for this video I have no rights to it this is Bethel music goodness of God by Jen Johnson and victory This is the good part. You've been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. I will sing of the goodness of God. In a time where people's hearts are failing them for fear it's the season of the panickers really people aren't grounded that that's what we're realizing people are not grounded and as a result of that they create confusion and discomfort for the rest of us who are grounded now, i'm not here to knock anybody but you have to know you have to know romans eight twenty eight. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, them who are the called according to his purpose. I hope you can join me in hearing what is the heart of God for his people. And I just want to welcome you all to this channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Kish Johnson and I am the Destiny Coach. I am his voice and that's just what I would rather be called as his voice he speaks to me and this is something that I've treasured ever since I've known myself from a child growing up and I've had I've cherished the fact that the Lord speaks to me and I have been learning his voice throughout my life in different circumstances I'm pretty sure I've been wrong I'm pretty sure that I didn't get it right so many times but I have learned most of all how to trust him and how to be confident that I know the voice of God and when he speaks I will hear so today I made a random turn up at a church that was so unplanned never been first timer it's so nice to be a first timer at a church I'm experiencing this they, the first Sunday of the announcement of the coronavirus being um, a national emergency and a pandemic and the government has declared that gatherings over 250 should be prohibited in order to contain the virus and so many churches are live streaming today and I wanted to go to church today I wanted to go to church because of the Word of God that he gave to me and I found myself in a church that I've never been to before and what an experience that was it was a beautiful experience it was really different and it was a learning experience above all but I got the word I got the word and that's what matters the most is that and here's something I noticed I may have missed going to my regular church that I go to but I never missed the word you see I never miss the word I because God follows his people when he wants to speak to them and this is one of the ways I've I've proven over my life how God speaks to me is that he follows me wherever I go he follows me and so I'm always nigh to the word of God the word of God is nigh me even in my very mouth but he always has a servant a prophet a preacher some sent one who is ready to unfold the word of God to me and today was no different in this new church and the word of God came from Romans chapter 8 and 28 I just read it and the first thing the preacher said is that we know right those who know their god those who know the word of god are not shaken in times like these those who just know we are not the ones busy with the panic and causing a scare and taking off all the tissues off the shelf and the paper towels that we just must have per adventure this is what's going to prevent the disease i don't know why people are doing the things they're doing right now it really doesn't make any sense to me but people believe that surrounding them 
themselves with material things is what will give them comfort in a time of fear. It, it, it's amazing how people's mindsets operate. You see all of the silly coming out when people are faced with fear and in a case of high emergency, people don't know what to do. And so their first resolve is to panic. And so everybody's talking on the jobs. And at, 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 when, when the workplace closes, everybody hits the street and it's crazy like this. Y'all just coming off your jobs with a panic. What were you talking about all day? What were you listening to all day? You know, and so... It's important that we know what to feed our mind. I don't feed my mind with CNN. I have not watched CNN in over a month. I don't feed my mind with what's going on on CNN. I feed my mind with the Word of God. And so when you're in the Spirit... And when God speaks to you, you are aware that catastrophe is going to be upon the land. And I know God warns us by his prophets before he touches and, and does anything in the land. And I have been privy to the fact that God was going to touch our nation in a very scary way. I was not, I, I don't know, I didn't know how, but I was prepared for it, kind of like a knowing. And this experience I had on January 14th in a conversation with the Lord and I, and the Spirit of the Lord would have me to release this operation in the earth. I don't know what it was. So I'm not taking any blame for coronavirus or for any other pandemic or, or um, earthquakes or anything else that's happening. I just know that because I hear God. He wanted to do something to bring order in his court. Those were the words he said to me. And that he was going to move and remind us that he needs our attention and i stood up bravely as the prophetess of god and i i gave god this this is freedom to operate because you know not that god needs us as men but he does need us i've seen where god operates and does major things in the earth by having his prophets warn us i mean we can go all the way back to noah when he preached for three years about the flood that was coming they had never seen any flood they never even understood what he was talking about this kind of rain and and so that's how god operates he sent a moses down to pharaoh god can do whatever he wants to do but he's raised us up in his likeness and in, in his image to operate as god so we have a certain level of dominion on earth and so god needs us from time to time to unlock and to release so that he can operate and i hope you can get this if you don't get this just check with your bishop your pastor your bible teacher and they can explain further to you but i knew there was something that was going to happen just like on the eve of kobe bryant's death i had my experience of giving my tribute to him and and just knew i had to give my tribute to kobe bryant that saturday before he passed and i did it right here in this church and in my living room it was just a vision i saw of um, a boy in a classroom making a tribute to him and then it led me into just praying and saying god i thank you for his life and and so the next day kobe bryant took his exit back to the realm of the spirit and here we are here we are today i received this word from god and it brought me to a consciousness that i needed i know that god told me he was going to bring order in his court and so could it be according to this word that all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose now when we are called to the purpose of God, all things work together for good. So a virus comes, but it can't touch your life. And so a flood comes, but it will not devour you. You understand what I'm saying? Because you are preserved by the calling of God upon your life, okay? All things work together for good. Now, should someone say, oh, it seems as if she was devastated by a happening. Should it be that there was even a loss of life? Perhaps that was your destiny, that that should be your time. You've served your purpose well, and it's time for all things to work together for good. We know the Bible says that to be absent in this flesh is to be present with God. That is a good. That is working for us. When the saints of God dies, it is a good that is working for us. And so we, with this consciousness, we understand that there is nothing that can happen in this present life and on this earth that could make the kingdom of God be shaken because we have the word of God and we stand on the word and in all things we give thanks 
We give thanks for this virus. We give thanks to the consciousness that it's bringing to the people that there is a cause for you to turn and find who it is that's the bomb in Gilead. There is a healer. There is a protector. It's time to pray. Amen. Help me, Lord. And so the word of God came to me from Joel chapter 1 and chapter 2 yesterday. This is where we can find the heart of God concerning this virus. Now, I don't know how many prophets or whoever is out there with this teaching or explaining or telling the people, but I have to be sensitive that this is what the Lord wants us to do. This is what the Lord is saying to the people and to the nation, and I have to release the word. And I'm using the messenger version because I really love this version. It says here, also you priests put on your robes, join the outcry. You who lead people in worship, lament, spend the night dressed in gunny sacks. You servants of my God, nothing's going on in the place of worship. Listen to God. This is where his mind is. Nothing's going on in the place of worship. No offerings, no prayers, nothing. Declare a holy fast and call a special meeting. Get the leaders together. Round up everyone in the country. Get them into God's sanctuary for serious prayer to God. So yesterday I was dealing with heavily in the word trying to understand what God is saying to me why he led me to read Joel chapter 1 and Joel chapter 2 and in Joel chapter 2 we said there's also this it's not too late God's personal messages come back to me and really mean it come fasting and weeping being sorry for your sins change your life not just your clothes come back to God your God and here's why. God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath and puts up with a lot. This most patient God, extravagant in his love, is always ready to cancel a catastrophe. Now, aren't we in a catastrophe? We have a deadly disease that is wreaking havoc on the land, highly contagious and hard to be contained. And, and people are fearful and rightfully so. However, we cannot be shaken when we know the word of God, okay? You have to remind the spirit of fear that the Lord has not given me the spirit of fear, but to love and of power and of a sound mind. And so we call forth a sound mind across the nation for all believers in the name of Jesus. And we declare that we get into prayer, we get into fasting, we call this a solemn occasion. Now is not a time to stay away from worship or to stay away from gathering, okay? The, the world can decree what they desire for us, but we, the people of of God live by the order of God and so it's our mandate to gather together and to pray and to seek the face of God because he is the only one that can deliver us from catastrophe all things work together for good to those who are loved and are the called according to his purpose now it is the purpose of God for his prophets and his true voices his preachers in this time to bring comfort to the people Okay, an effective preacher will afflict those who are comfortable and comfort those who are afflicted. And this is something I learned in my pop-up visit in this church. It was so amazing. I had to write it down. Jesus is the bomb. He is more powerful than a decree, than a virus, than every storm. Okay, he never backs down from anything and we will not we will declare his name and we will declare the blood of Jesus over our houses. Now, the children of Israel had to operate according to how God instructed them when these plagues were hidden Pharaoh and in Egypt. See, so this is a plague. This is just one of the many plagues, okay, that will be hitting us. And so we have to understand and get into position as the people of God that we do not get become fearful and retreat, but that we declare the blood over us, which is one of the things that the children of Israel had to do, put the blood of the lamb 
that was killed on their door. Now we know Jesus Christ is our Lamb of God. We need to plead the blood of Jesus upon our family in everything that we do. That is how we handle ourselves in the midst of plagues. Come on, church. Are you with me here? And so that is where we will find the mind of God concerning his people that we need to know this is working all in the perfect divine will of God. He needs a consciousness back in this earth where people draw to church again, where people draw to worship again, where people remember that he is a true and living God. This is a time where everyone is choosing to do whatsoever is right and pleasing in their own sight. They be what they want to be. They dress like how they want to dress. It doesn't matter what age. It doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter the sexuality. People are choosing whatever the flesh is telling them to choose and so God has got to remind us no you are called honey you are called by my purpose and because you are called you don't do what flesh says you don't do what man says you do what I God says and and so God has to bring us back to a place where we remember that he is in control we have to put the right king back on the throne we have the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he's calling us to repentance He's calling us back to acknowledgement. He says, return to me, my people. That's all he wants for us to return to him. And the favorable good condition will work itself out. You cannot be harmed by a disease. If you say yes to the call of God, that's what this is all about. Saying yes to the call of God. Understand this. Those of, of us who have been called now... <laughs> Do you remember Jonah when he, God sent him to Nineveh to warn his people? Now, this is why I'm really doing this, because when God says warn, we need to take warning seriously, because when we refuse to obey God, there's some consequences in our lives that we are going to suffer from. I don't want to suffer because of disobedience. And so Jonah tried to escape performing this calling upon his life. He ended up in the belly of a fish for three days okay isn't it easier to just answer to the call of god whether we like to or not whether we want it to or not whether it's convenient or comfortable god has to disrupt our comfort places to get us on the path of purpose and so this is not something to take you out this is not something to say lord have mercy he will have mercy when we fall in obedience what are you doing wrong right now? How close are you to being in obedience with the call of God upon your life? Are you geographically located where God wants you to be? Are you spiritually located where God wants you to be? Are you situated in the right condition of your destiny? If God predestinated you and if he called you, he said he knew you when he, he spoke to Jeremiah who was trying to make ex excuses to get out of the call of God. He said, Jeremiah, I've known you. Before you even went in your mother's womb, I've known you. I've formed you. And you will fulfill my purpose. And to those of us who refuse to be in obedience with the purpose of God, he is going to interrupt our life. He is going to interrupt our normalcy. He is going to bring discomfort until we get into alignment with the call that's upon our lives. And so today I implore and I encourage us that we fall into the goodness of God, that we fall into the calling of God, that we fall into the promises of God, that we become Become one with our destiny that he has chosen for us not the one that we choose for ourselves but that we take it very seriously what God needs for us to do and all of you leaders every I see all of what's happening now as a wake-up call to our leaders, our elders, because every scripture that the Lord has been giving me since the start of this year was directed to his leaders of his people, those who are bishops, those who are elders, those who are pastors. <laughs> he told me that his, 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 his leaders, his pastors, they've committed sins against them, affliction against them. Go to Jeremiah chapter 2, it's all there. 
There is a cry. There is an almost like a wrath of God. See, we spend so much time preaching about the love and the goodness of God, but we never want to mention the wrath of God. And so when the wrath of God is coming to bring us back into repentance, we want to see this as the devil. And we don't want this kind of thing. But it is written and it must come to pass. Let the word find you today. Let the word search you out. And may you fall into obedience with the word of God.